I love it when my lesson plan comes together. Do, 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 do. Today we're going to talk more about the normal distribution. We have done one probability. Let's do some more examples. You're going to have to do a whole lot of these in the homework. Let's make another video. We've done the probability that a student sleeps less than four hours. Now, last night I got 7.3 hours of sleep. You can be jealous. I want to know what percentage of the students got more sleep than I did. What's the probability that a random student gets more than 7.3 hours of sleep? Well, let's come over to my picture. I'm going to erase the four hours that we did before and redraw what it's going to look like for the seven hours. First question I'm going to have is, where does that 7.3 land? Here is six hours. If I go up to, <clears throat> there's eight hours. So it's just a little bit less than eight. Is it here? Is it here? I can kind of eyeball it. Let's see if we can get an exact number. Where does 7.3 land? How many standard deviations away is it? That's the question that leads us to a z-score. How many standard deviations away? How do you calculate that? Well, let's see how far is 7.3 from 6. 7.3 minus 6, that's how far away the data that we're interested in, this 7.3 is. But we want to know how many standard deviations. So we're going to divide that by 2. That tells us our z-score of how many standard deviations away it is. So, 7.3 minus 6 divided by 2 is 0.65. Ooh, I was putting my finger clear out here. I don't think so. It's just barely more than half. So let's see, here's 2, here's the halfway mark. It's about right here. There's where 7.3 lands. Let's shade in our picture. We want the probability of being more than 7.3. So from right here, I want all the area greater than 7.3. So I can kind of eyeball. It's a little bit more than what we had last time. Last time it was 16%, I don't know, maybe 20%. Let's find out by going to the Z table and it'll tell us. So here's the Z table that we were looking at before. Right here is where that negative 1 was, but we have a positive number, a positive 0 0.65. So let's scroll down on our z table, and the next page has positive z values. So all the z values on the negative table are talking about what happens when you're below the mean. All the values on the positive z table are talking about what happens when you're above the mean. So here I'm at 0, the number I had was 0.65. So 0 0.6 right here, 0 0.60, 0 0.61, 0 0.62. The number I had was 0 0.65. If you'll notice, it lines up with the 0.05 right up here. So 0 0.065 is this number, 0 0.7422. That's our probability. Let's go back to our picture. See so we looked up on the Z table, our 0 0.65, probability was 0 0.7422. That's about 74%. Based on this graph, does it look like there's about 74% there? I hope you can see the answer is no. This is your red flag. Something's wrong. We've missed something. What happened? Here's what happened. On our Z table, it tells us the area from where we are to the left, always to the left. So from here to the left, that's our 0 0.7422. 0.7422. Is this area 0.7422? Well, no, it's not. How do we find this area? We're going to do the trick of everything adds up to 100%. If this is 74%, this piece must be 1 minus 0.7422. That's the area to the right of this, which equals 0.2578. Based on my picture, does this look like it could be about 25%? Okay, yeah, that seems more reasonable. That's our answer to this question. It's 0.2578. So although I feel like I got a lot of sleep, 25% of the students got more sleep than I did. Let's ask a related question that's very similar. What's the probability that a student is going to get 
as much sleep or more, which is 7.3. What's different from what we did before? Before we said, what's the probability a student gets more sleep than me? Now I'm saying, what's the probability they get more sleep or exactly the same amount of sleep as me? What's going to happen? If we look at my picture, what have I added to my picture? Can you see this dashed line right here? It's a dashed line because we didn't include it before. Now we are including the number 7.33. Or just 7.3, I guess it is. How does that change the area? It doesn't. A single line doesn't actually have any area. Remember, the probability that you get exactly 7.3000000000000 amount of sleep, that doesn't happen. There's no probability there. So whether you include 7.3 or not, you get the same answer. This is still 0.2578. Now, let's ask a different question. We've looked at the probability of getting 4 hours of sleep or less, 7.3 hours of sleep or more. Now I want to say, what's the probability that if I randomly select a student, they're going to get between 4 hours and 7.3 hours of sleep? And just to make it trickier, I'm going to put an equal sign under there. So let's go back to my picture and see what this does. I know this area here is 0.2578. And earlier I calculated the area from 4 and below. And the area there was 0 0.1587. 0 0.1587. So I have 15% here and 25% there. But I want an area in between. Here's what I'm talking about. It's this red area. How can I figure that out? Well, there's lots of ways to do it. The hard way would be to start over. Calculate a z-score for this, calculate a z-score for that, find the area of both of them. We have enough information here on the board to answer this question, though. I know the whole thing adds up to 100%. So I'm going to start with 100%, and I'm going to subtract off this tail that I just calculated, the 0.1589. 5, 8, it is 7, yeah, thank you. Minus, now I'm going to subtract off this tail, my 25.78%. So 0.2578. That will leave me with the piece in the middle, which is what I'm interested in. So if I take 1 minus 0.1587, subtract the 0.2578, I'm left with 0.5835 as my area. About 58%. Looking at the picture, does that seem okay? Does it seem like we have just over 50% right here? Um, yeah, I'm not the greatest artist, but I think about 50% looks like it could be reasonable. A little over 50%. So this is how you can find probabilities given a value, either less than, greater than, we don't care about the equals, or even an area in between. Next time, we'll talk about going backwards.